Things have slowed down as far as call-ups lately, but that doesn't mean that there aren't some high-end prospects you should be stashing. In fact, there's one player I think you need to go and get now before everybody else catches on. The best team in baseball as of right now is the New York Yankees, and you'd think there's no room for them to call up any of their prospects. They've got a deep farm system, some big-name players like Jason Dominguez, who I talked about a couple weeks ago. Look, even if he weren't hurt, there's just no room on the roster for him, but there is potentially a spot for Ben Rice. Now, this is really interesting because Ben Rice is a catcher by trade, but he's been playing a lot of first base lately. Now, just got promoted not too long ago to the AAA level because he's done nothing but hit throughout the minors. Across double and triple A this year, so far he's hitting 275 with 15 home runs and nine steals. Not a bad little bonus for someone who's catcher eligible, and this might be my favorite type of prospect, a guy who qualifies at catcher in fantasy, but doesn't have to be behind the plate every day. Now, here's why the Yankees might need him. So first of all, mention that he's playing first base a lot. Anthony Rizzo was just diagnosed with a fractured arm. He's going to be out several weeks. They're going to need a replacement. Sure, the Yankees could always make a trade because that's what they tend to do. But it's a little early and look, if they have help down at the farm. Why not go with a guy like Rice who's hitting the ball so well? Honestly, even if they just want to try him out at catcher, that might be a good idea because you might have seen that, well, they just got embarrassed because the Red Sox, of all teams, stole nine bases on the Yankees in one game. And it's easy to understand why, because Jose Trevino, you know, good veteran catcher, not so good with throwing runners out. He's got the second worst pop time to second among all catchers in the majors. So yeah, it made sense that the Red Sox were going to run wild on him. Which makes you think, what about Austin Wells? I thought he was a high-end prospect who's also a catcher for the Yankees. And that's what I thought until I've seen him play this year. Wells is also subpar as far as catching base runners, stealing, and he's only hitting 208. Just has not yet developed. Sure, there's time, but when you're a front runner like the Yankees, you don't want to just sit and wait for a position like catcher and someone and hope that he develops. So it wouldn't be surprising if they put Rice behind the plate or at first base. No guarantees this happens, but look, he's already moved up to the AAA level. This seems like it's just a matter of time, and this is obviously a great situation for any prospect. The Yankees, only one of the best offenses in the league, but Yankee Stadium, one of the best for a left-handed hitter with power like Rice. If you're in a dynasty league, keeper league, this is a no-brainer. You want to get ahead of the game and get Rice now. Even in deeper leagues, you could always use help at catcher for the most part, so this is going to be my top stash. Now, here's a little bit more of a long-term ad potentially, but let's stay in New York and look at the Mets. I've talked about the Mets as a potential seller. We know this is very possible, though not official yet. Let's see what happens over the next couple of weeks. But if the Mets do decide to trade away some of their veteran players, you know, the first to go is probably going to be J.D. Martinez, who only is a DH, aging player on a one-year contract. Maybe some other moves get made, who knows? But this will clear a spot. You know, we saw this last year with the Mets. Again, that bloated payroll and no results in terms of wins. And then that gave a chance for guys like Mark Vientos, Ronnie Mauricio, a lot of the young players to come up. Well, this year, it could be their number two prospect, Drew Gilbert, outfielder. Gilbert came over from the Astros last year, like in two separate stints at Double A between the Astros and Mets farm systems. He hit 271, 12 home runs, 41 RBIs, and eight steals. This is a guy who can kind of do it all. He's got some power, a pretty good hit tool. He also has plus speed, so potentially, I wouldn't say a high end fantasy contributor in every category, but he could help you across all categories. And he's showing that he could have a pro-ready bat because he had a walk rate over 12%, which is very encouraging. That's what teams want to see, while keeping his strikeout rate under 20%. Now, this year, only 25 at-bats, right? Because he's been on the IL with a hamstring strain. This is why this is something that's going to take a little bit of time. He's going to need to get some more at-bats in the minors this year. And, of course, we're talking about trades. Well, we're still about a month away from that. So... I'm not expecting Gilbert to be called up real soon, but again, this is called beat the breakout. We're getting ahead of the game. You know, you don't wait a few weeks until this happens. You get ahead and you stash this guy before it happens. And of course, if any team is going to be a seller, it's the White Sox. Well, one of the pitching prospects we could see up next, we already seen Drew Thorpe come up. 
Maybe Jake Eater will be next up. He's also a high-end pitching prospect. He was drafted originally by the Marlins out of Vanderbilt. Two good things here. We know Vanderbilt is a pretty good factory for producing major league players, but also, you know, the Marlins, if nothing else, are good at drafting pitchers. Not always great at developing them into major leaguers, at least, you know, for their own team. But this is a guy who is a definitely high-end prospect. Now, he missed all of 2022 with Tommy John surgery, so we're still waiting for the velocity to fully come back, but he does have an elite slider. The results so far this year and the minors have been mixed, let's just say that. It's not somebody who's forcing his way up you know, real soon, but of course, as soon as we see Garrett Crochet, Eric Fetty, who knows who else get traded, it's a good chance Eater does get a shot at the majors. This year at AA, he's got a 4.26 ERA, a 1.45 whip. Uh, not what you want to see. I will say this. The walk rate, at least, is getting lower. It was higher last year. He's lowered it to a 9.6% walk rate. If he continues to improve his command, which should happen over time, then the whip will obviously get lower too. But he is at least getting a 28% strikeout rate. I don't always pay much attention to kind of these analysis as far as projections and player comps, but it did catch my eye that on fan graphs, uh, the write-up here on Eater basically said he might be a lefty Spencer Strider. That's something that's worth taking note of, whether it turns out to be true or not. This player does have tremendous upside. Now, it's hard to know what the Padres are going to wind up doing this season. They're kind of stuck in the middle here. Are they contenders or are they not? Well, either way, there might be a need for a hitter like Graham Pauly. Now, Pauly was up early in the season with the Padres, but let's just say it didn't go well. He hit 125 with a strikeout rate, is that right, near 50%? 15 Ks in 32 at-bats and didn't draw a single walk. That's what you call overmatched. So, okay, they set him down. He's been in the minors and he's done okay. I mean, the batting average still isn't great, to be honest. He's in 217 for the AAA El Paso Chihuahuas. But he is showing some power. He's got six homers, 33 RBIs. He did manage a couple of home runs in the brief time he was with the Padres early this season. But the good news is that plate discipline is definitely better right now. In fact, almost as many walks as strikeouts at AAA. Now, Pauly is a third baseman. Third base is pretty much locked down by Manny Machado, but there is a spot potentially at DH. Right now, the Padres are rolling with a very experienced 36-year-old duo of David Peralta and Donovan Solano. It's working out okay for now, but get at some point, if the Padres decide to go young or are forced to go young or just need some more upside, we can see Polly slide in there at DH or maybe play some third, let Machado DH. Anyways, Polly is a player with some upside here, got some power. If he can figure out how to not strike out so much at the major league level, he could wind up being productive. And then if you know prospects, you've heard of Carson Williams, one of the top prospects in all of baseball, but specifically for the Tampa Bay Rays, only not their top prospect because they have a guy named Junior Caminero, who's number one. We're still waiting for Caminero to come up. He's had some injuries that have held him back and also that whole service time thing. Well, Williams is right there in terms of talent. He's super young as well, though only 20 years old. That doesn't really matter anymore, right? If there's a need, if he forces his way up, it could happen. Now, Williams is at double A and he's been raking this year. Right now, a slash line, 294, 376, 552. He's got 10 home runs. He's got 15 steals. Again, this is at the double A level. He's a solid defender, very athletic guy, obviously. Could he be their future shortstop? Absolutely. When will that future happen? Well, it might happen sooner than we think because right now, believe it or not, the Rays dead last in the AL East, somehow behind even Toronto. Look, Jose Caballero has been solid, but He's not spectacular. He's just kind of a decent offensive player, just kind of a decent defensive player. Taylor Walls come back from injury. He's playing, and I honestly don't know why. He is a liability on offense, and he's not even really good on defense either. How long are they going to stick with him? This might wind up being a September call-up, but I just want to say put Carson Williams on your radar now because when he does come up, he might stay up for good. Those are my favorite stashes this week in fantasy baseball. These are my favorite waiver wire pickups from the weekend, and you could still be able to grab some of them.